Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. 35 minutes after the hour, and Gary Mortensen joins me now, director of the Shepherds of Helmland, Hellman. And uh, Gary, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Lars. Listen, uh, tell people, first of all, uh, about the, the, the genesis of this movie. Where did the idea come from to profile these National Guard members? Well, I'd made a first film called This is War, Memories of Iraq a couple of years back that really chronicled a, a battalion of Oregon National Guardsmen who had been over there. And from that, I had a lot of folks coming to me saying, there's some really great stories out there that aren't being told. And as I, as I started hearing more of these stories, I thought, my gosh, it's, it's, it's such a shame that so many of these stories aren't getting told. But selectively, this one was incredible. It's a, it's a 17-man, all-volunteer unit that deployed uh, to go over and train the, uh, the Afghan National Army. And they end up in the deadly Helmand province doing something that they had no idea that they'd be doing, which were up in these little remote patrol bases and uh, under constant attack by the Taliban. And when I heard that story, I thought, wow, now here's something that, that folks need to hear about. Gary, why is that particular area of Afghanistan so dangerous? Well, one of the main reasons is it's where a lot of the, uh, the poppy production is, is done. It's the opium trade. And uh, this, this small group, uh, they were the first of its kind to go in there, and it was, a, it was called a, a counter-narcotics infantry Kandak, and Kandak is Afghan for battalion. And these, this little 17-man group was the first of its kind to, to, to form a counter-narcotics mission, and they were, they were to go in there and help to interdict the, uh, the opium trade. And, it, and the, the Taliban is fanatically protecting that because it's a, it's a great source of arming their war machine. Well, that makes it a, even more important that we knock it down, doesn't it? Because we don't need them to have excess cash that they can buy weapons with. Could not agree with you more. So what, what kind of stories can you give us a, a hint without giving away the whole movie of the kinds of stories that people will see in The Shepherds of Hellman? You bet. What they're going to see is, as an example, these guys got peeled off about halfway through their deployment up into these small little remote patrol bases along the Helmand River. And if you, if you think of uh, if, the Helmand province, think of really the moon. It looks like the moon. It's just cratered and barren and desolate, except for where the Helmand River is. And then it's lush because it's where they grow the poppy and alternatively corn, which the Taliban do a lot of uh, ambushing from. And these little uh, initial British patrol bases that were set up along the Helmand River the farther north you go, the more really intense and remote it gets. And the film follows uh, a group of, of the guys that, that end up at, it's called Patrol Base Adel, which is Afghan for warrior or hero. And they end up in this thing. They're up there about three months, and almost every single day they're involved in a firefight. So think of like, um, you know, Gunga Din or Bo Jest or Fort Apache. These guys are isolated up there pretty much on their own with very little support. And uh, they're, they're up on these... Uh, these firewalls firing at this Taliban, and their whole goal is to try to overrun that base and kill all the Americans. But these people, uh, our soldiers, end up prevailing in the end. They sure do. And it it is is truly, you know, I cannot say enough about these guys. It is just a a great group of individuals, as every individual I meet from the American military is. Well, I mean, I just, I can't wait to take, I've got a copy of it here. It's sitting on my desk. It just arrived today. I can't wait to take it home and take a good look at it because, because uh, you know, I guess I've just been waiting for Hollywood uh, to do this. And, and really, I guess the job is not going to get done by Hollywood. It's going to get done by independent filmmakers like you. It is. And, and you know, it's interesting, a couple of great points on that. These films don't get made without some support. And I was fortunate enough to have the folks from Benchmade Knives come up and say, this is an important story, Gary, we want to help you make this thing and make sure it gets done. And, and I, I'm internally grateful for that. Because-